story I'm going to tell today is about a naga. These are miraculous creatures who live in pools and lakes and rivers. They have wonderful palaces and guard treasures, and they're really a bit like dragons in the West, but they're mostly kindly. They have the ability to change shape when they come above the ground, and they can remember their past lives. They can remember all the things that have happened to them in the past. So they really are very auspicious and wonderful beings, and people often pay reverence to them. Now, in this story, the Bodhisattva, the Buddha-to-be, is reborn as a Naga. And he finds himself in a wonderful palace as a king, with beautiful princesses around, lots of food, drink and jewels and beautiful clothes. And although it's such a wonderful situation that he compares it to where he was before, which was as a beggar and a human, he's actually very ashamed and embarrassed because he remembers that being a human being was actually better than this. You could actually have dealings with people and you could control your mind and you could practice mindfulness. And he can't do any of these things in this wonderful palace. There are so many interesting things going on. There's always a distraction and he can't somehow settle his mind and be still. So he makes a wish that one day he can be a human again. In the meantime, he falls in love with a beautiful Naga princess called Sumana or Jasmine. And they live very happily together. But after a while, he still feels he wants to practice mindfulness and to be alert and to to know what it is to be more in control of your mind. So on every imposter day, that's the full moon and the new moon days, he goes up above the ground and takes the form of a snake. That's the usual way Nagas appear above the ground. And he just sits quietly and practices mindfulness and is alert about things that are going on. And restored by this, he then returns to his palace kingdom. But his wife, Sumana, gets very worried about him going above ground. She says to him, one day you're just going to get captured by a snake charmer and you'll be, you'll be treated badly and you'll be made to dance in front of other people. And he says, don't worry. If that happens to me, I won't do anything wrong. Although I'm a naga and could really damage somebody and I could use my magical powers to harm them, I won't. I will keep Sila restraint and I will stay and do whatever the snake charmer asks me to do. And his wife says, but how will I know this has happened to you? And he says again, don't worry, you will see the water in this pool turning red and then you will know that you must come and rescue me. So one day, while he is practising alertness and is above ground and looks like a snake, and he's very beautiful, he's compared to a wreath of jasmine flowers. A young man who's just learnt a lot of spells and chants comes along and does a spell over him and thinks he's very clever because he has now trapped this beautiful snake. And the Bodhisattva thinks to himself, well, I mustn't harm this young man. I will let him do whatever he wants me to do. So the young man takes him from village to village and from country town to country town and has him perform in the market squares. And people throw coins and clap because when the snake does his dance, it is just so beautiful that everybody wants to watch. Eventually, he makes so much money that he decides he will take the snake and take him to the palace of the king and go to the city. So he goes right up to the capital, goes to the palace, knocks on the door and says, I have the most wonderful snake who does great dances. I'd like the king to watch him. And the king agrees. But meanwhile, in the underwater palace where Sumana lives, the Bodhisattva's queen, the water has started to go red and she realises she must go and help him. Now, as she's a naga, she can choose what forms, form she takes. So she flies in the air and appears just above the king, looking like a beautiful goddess. 
Now in the centre of the king's palace, the snake king is about to perform his dance and the snake charmer is there. But the king stops and says, who is this beautiful goddess who has come in the air before me? What realm have you come from? And she says, Sumina says, I'm just a Naga lady. I've come to rescue my husband. He is that snake. He could damage everybody here if he wants to, but he is a great being. He has decided not to, and he will never harm other beings. So please release him, because he should be at home with me, not dancing here. The king is greatly moved by the beauty and the words of the lovely Sumana, so he says, of course. And the snake charmer himself is so embarrassed now that he agrees to release the snake too. So, just for a moment, the snake is released, and just for a moment he stands fully human on the ground, which is the form, of course, that he really should be taking. And the goddess comes down from the sky and stands just for a moment next to him, also as a human being. And then the snake king invites the king who has just released him and says, please come and visit my kingdom. You have been so kind to me. I'd like to return some hospitality to you. But the king says, I'm so frightened. I couldn't possibly go under the waters. I might drown. How will I know that I'll ever get back? And the great being says, you have my word. You have seen that I act in accordance with my principles. So if you come to visit me in my underwater kingdom, I will make sure that you return home too, safely. So the king thanks him and accepts. And with his entourage, he goes and visits the beautiful palace of Champea under the water. And there's lapis lazuli there and beautiful lotus ponds and wonderful treasures and diamonds and wonderful food. And there are beautiful trees there too, under the water. And he has such a wonderful time, he asked Champea, why is it you want to return to the human realm? While you're down here, you have everything you, you want. You have food, you have music, you have beautiful people around you. And Champea says to him, yes, I have all of these things, but what I really want is to be a human being. Because when I'm a human being, I will be able to help other beings. I will be able to stand on the ground on my own two feet. I will be able to keep my mind undistracted. And I'll be able to exercise control over what I do and what I say. Return home to your kingdom, great king, and rule safely. Take all these jewels of mine. Take these treasures and take them home to your palace and make sure that you too never behave with cruelty and are never unkind. And the, the king thanks him, agrees, and then leaves and returns back to his palace. Eventually, the Bodhisattva Champaya does return to the human realm, which is his true home. And although he had enjoyed many aspects of life as a Naga, and all the abilities that it gave him, all the magical abilities and all the wonderful treasures that he saw there. Really where he wanted to be was as a human being standing on the ground. I think this story shows us in a way how to appreciate what we have, that we live in a world where we are human beings and can speak and act well and can practice alertness and see that our minds are clear. But it's very nice to meet Nagas sometimes.